Alive everypony, bronies and pegasisters of all ages, welcome once again to Like a Ditsy Do, a video blog about the My Little Pony collectible card game. I am your host, Nate Damn Z, and how awesome is it that MLP has gotten a full-blown movie? And I don't just mean as a brony, but how long has it been since a kid's show was such a pop culture phenomenon? that its powers that be thought it was worth the risk of mass releasing a movie in theaters. If I had to guess, I'd say it was probably about 30 years ago. As you may have guessed, I absolutely loved the movie. I'm not going to go into that too much in this video, but me and the friends I went to see it with recorded something of a review of it in a totally original style that has never been done before by anyone ever. I'll include a link to it in my description. Pretty much since the movie was even announced, I've been really eager to see what the folks at Interplay have in store for the card game. My biggest hope was that we would get an entire expansion set dedicated to the movie with no cards that weren't related to it. I didn't think that was a realistic expectation, but in my heart of hearts, that's what I wanted. Now, there is a part of me that feels that if I was going to get a wish to come true, it really should have been for world peace or to end world hunger. Something, you know, humanitarian-y and not completely selfish. That said, I will gladly take it. Sequestria and Beyond, now slated for a November 24th release, is the ninth set for the My Little Pony collectible card game. It's about 140 to 150 cards, including six new mains, all of whom are characters from the movie. In fact, as I alluded to, every single card in this set, from friends to troublemakers, songs to dilemmas, is connected to the movie. I cannot begin to tell you how ridiculously pumped I am for this set. In fact, I am calling it right now. Sequestria and Beyond is already my new favorite expansion set in the game. I'll admit this may seem premature, but consider what I said in my Marks and Time review. That set was my favorite at the time because it had a lot of positive emotional associations tied to it. With Sequestria and Beyond, I've already had similar experiences, plus so much more. You know, I love the movie, the fact that Enterplay started spoiling cards right before I got to see it made me love it even more. You know, I'll get to that in a second. There's a nostalgia factor with the parallels to Transformers and the fact it got an animated theatrical movie in its heyday. There's the fact that even the idea that our beloved property got a movie is really kind of special. And the fact that it's getting an entire expansion set of the card game, not like a two-player set or a Celestial Solstice-style box, an entire set dedicated to it which is never done before in the history of this game, that just makes it seem all the more special to me, considering my vested interest in the game. But please don't think I'm basing my declaration of favoritism based solely on good vibes. We've already gotten a fair number of spoilers for the set, and I have to say I've really been impressed with most of what we've seen so far, which is what we are going to talk about today. In celebration of this movie and all the wonder it's giving to us, I'm trying a new idea. Instead of just a wish list of hopes and expectations tied into my favorite parts of the movie, I'm going to talk about each spoiler we've gotten so far and talk about why I think they will be great additions to the game. Something of a spoiler alert for this video, there will be gushing. Alright, so if the order seems haphazard, that's because I plan to talk about these in the order in which I personally saw them. So, you're not going to get all the mains at once, you're not going to get the resources at once, etc. Although, come on guys, who else was I going to start with? This was the first spoiler I saw a few hours before the movie, and of course, I was super happy about it. And, not only because... Yes, the obvious character reference, but 
one of the new keywords was revealed right away. It wasn't just, hey, here are the keywords and we're left wondering what they do. Nope, here's the keyword, here's what it does. But speaking of the keyword, Traveler is pretty freaking awesome. And it fits thematically, which you know, again is something I really appreciate. And this card is pretty close to perfect because I know what it represents, you know, ditzy do randomly showing up in the background. Although I'll admit the flavor text helped me figure that one out. But yeah, this thing has perfect cost to power ratio, it has a very low requirement, and it's common. And you know, movement is a key part of the game, so you're going to get plus one each time. I'm going to be using the heck out of this card. And after I retweeted Party Mare and said, oh my god, for spoiler, one Emperor Bugle pointed out, it's like, no, we've already gotten two more. The first of which I saw was Captain Solanio, Solanio, the pirate captain, Corsair captain. She's pretty expensive to play, but look at all she does. Competitive 2 is always good, even on its own, but it gives Competitive 2 to your other pirates. So not only is giving Competitive 2 to more of your cards really awesome, it's mechanics that involve traits. In my notes, I have a little heart emoji. And the captain lets you pay one less action token for pirate ship. Which, again, is an awesome card on its own, because it's a really cheap resource that makes movement easier. Which, incidentally, helps you rack up the plus one counters with the traveler keyword. And combine it with the captain, it's practically free movement. Almost as good as swift. That might be a slight exaggeration. And I was originally going to say that if you play this in a deck where you have cards that can ready resources, you can go movement crazy. But you will want to consider what those cards cost to play. And apparently there's only two of them. I could have sworn there are more. Next we have one of my favorite new cards. Already a contender for favorite card in the scent, but not just because of the mechanics. See, again, I saw this card spoiled before the movie, so when I went to the movie, my brain did that thing where I see the image used for a card. I recognize, okay, that's a card. So I saw this balloon animal, and I was like, okay, that's where that image for that card came from. But why is he a friend, and why did they call him Brian? And immediately after I thought that, if you've seen the movie, you know why. You know exactly what happened. And that just made me appreciate that moment all the more. And since then, I finally read the card's flavor text, which is just... I, I don't even know what to say. I, I love the flavor text. Now, you know, but speaking of mechanics, the mechanics are really good. You know, it's chaotic, so if you flip this card, you automatically get the free to play and you can use him to stop your opponent from messing up your strategy or use him to mess up your opponent's strategy. He's the exact same cost and requirements as Party Mayor, so it's another powerful, cheap, common card. Yeah, Brian really is a swell guy. Now we have Princess Cadence Royal Envoy, or as some of the people online have been calling her, Princess Cadence Back from Maternity Leave. Again, Traveler is really good, and her second effect makes Traveler doubly useful. She's not expensive to play. Honestly, she's worth considering for Traveler alone, but the second effect is really good even if you're building a deck around getting cards out of your discard pile. Boil Power Up is a must-have if you have a deck that heavily uses the plus one power counters which is one of Orange's main gimmicks now, if not its new primary gimmick. Equal ratio for power cost, fairly easy requirement for your primary color, and it's doable if it's Orange is your secondary. I, I just love Pirate as a trait, and that they're doing stuff with traits again. I told you guys there would be gushing. Spike Festival Assistant is the last spoiler I got before I went to the movie. And I'm 90% sure like the last spoiler for the premiere day. But 
as for what I think about it, you can pretty much just copy paste what I said about Traveler, Party Mare, and Brian. One to one ratio, low requirement, and just really, really good. Good on you, Spike. I'm proud of you. Our first main spoiler is Princess Skystar out of her shell. And I did a giggle and clap my hands because I love this character. And that's in part because of Glee and Pushing Daisies. I'm a fairly big Christian Chenworth fan. And she generates tokens, and a whole new type of token at that. Shells. She doesn't have a flipped ability, but she can easily flip on turn one, and you get seven power for it. And you can put tokens into play anywhere, so you can get started on both problems at once, or maybe confront one problem right away. And again, this is possible on your very first turn. I'm not sure how she's going to fare in competitive play, but for casual, she's probably the best pink main since DJ Pawn 3. Our first event spoiler is Pony Power! Um, pretty brief to say, I love the chaos ability. That much power is almost guaranteed to win you a face-off, at least in my experience. And it's great help for getting rid of your opponent's troublemakers or defeating your own villains. Yeah, nicely done. Applejack and Fluttershy, treading water. Yay for multicolor friends. And this card is very powerful for how cheap it is to play. Two or less printed power, is, again, as I mentioned episode two ago, is very easy to do in yellow. And I know it can be done in orange. And personally, I already really like the strategy of cards getting to stay at the problem deck and getting a head start on the next one. Heck, with this card, you can potentially confront a new problem as soon as it's played. Wow. Next up is Octavia Harmony and Dissonance. And for those out there who think I'm being way too positive, this is the first card I'm not gonna completely gush about. It's really good, but it doesn't hit my personal sweet spots like all the other ones I've been talking about before this did. You know, just for example, meticulous isn't my favorite keyword. It's good, it's just not exciting as the others. Yeah, but that said, the secondary effect is really powerful, and I like it a lot. The higher action token costs and double three color requirements make it trickier to play than the other cards I've been talking about, but it kind of needs to be for the sake of balance. Again, just because I don't like it as much as the other cards doesn't mean I don't recognize how powerful it is. You know, some pony on Twitter has already said printing this card was a mistake. But as has been pointed out, you can't have Octavia with DJ Pawn 3. And again, this is another won't gush, but still good. You know, it's further exploring Pink's newer gimmick of reducing action token cost to play friends. It's got basic cost and fairly low requirements means you can get into play really early. So again, that would be useful for making friends you play in the future easier to play. If it somehow interacted with Traveler, I probably would be gushing but I understand that they don't want to overuse that keyword, and I'm not sure that would make sense in terms of flavor here. All right, now we have a main for our bird captain. And like Princess Skystar, she is really powerful. And like the Octavia card, I have already seen people talking about she's too powerful. And I have to agree she's really good, and I am concerned about a certain combo I'll be talking about much later in the video. But once again, eBugle came to the rescue, and he linked to a Twitter post explaining why it's not as bad as people think, or at least his opinion. I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but at this point I've learned to trust his judgment. But yeah, no matter how you look at it, there is no denying this card is really flippin' good. You get points and flip your main right away. And just like Princess Skystar, you can do this on your very first turn. Your very first turn can be scoring points and flipping your main. I don't have this part in my notes, just the more I talk about this card and think about what it does, I have to agree it's really powerful. <laughs> it's really kind of crazy. Though now I am wondering if all the mains in this set will be quote-unquote powerless once flipped. 
I'm also really curious if all the mains in this set are going to be play two action tokens to do X and then flip. I guess we'll see. Okay gang, brace yourselves. If you thought I was disjointed before, you see this next batch of cards was spoiled the day I planned to record my video. So rather than delay the recording on my video, because as you may have guessed, I'm running pretty late with this, I just said I will get to it later, I recorded my video, and now I'm basically looking at these cards for the first time. I think the only one I've read all the way through is the first one here, Gummy Lap Gator. And wow, do not mess with Gummy. This is going to be the first time I'm going to read the game text for you guys because it's just nuts, at least in my opinion. When you move a character, you may put this card from your hand into play. So, okay, just getting to play a card from your hand for free, just for moving someone, that, you know, that's pretty freaking good. But you gotta remember cards like Falcon and a certain problem that lets you move a critter to it for free or just all sorts of crazy stuff that m yellow can do with movement in regards to critters and yes I know he's only one power but that just strikes me as really freaking good for such a low power cheap to play friend anyway I mean I don't even know why it has a cost and requirement you will always get to play it from your hand at least as far as I can tell I can't think of anything that would completely stop you from moving at all but maybe there will be reasons why you sh do need to play the action token. I don't know. I just think this is ridiculously good, or at least as ridiculously good as low power friends get. Okay, this is my first time looking at Rescue Party Cannon Cavalry, but before I get into the mechanics, I just want to take this moment to r assure anyone who hasn't seen the movie yet, yes, Pinkie Pie is amazing in it. But okay, so we got cost one higher than the power but fairly standard requirement and holy wow I can't believe I didn't think about combining swift and traveler before because of course you're going to be moving a card that has swift that's the whole point so basically you're paying one action token to get plus one power again that that's just really really good next storm king conniver four 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 Okay, so yeah, that's expensive, but if purple is your primary color, that's more than doable. Especially if you're playing purple for extra action tokens. Huh, his trait is Storm. That's interesting. When you move a character, you may exhaust this card to gain an action token. If you moved an opposing character, you may exhaust this card to gain two instead. Okay, yeah, that's... that's pretty good. I, I you know, speaking of purple's gimmicks, moving your opponent's characters is one of them so this card would make it easy to get two extra action tokens probably getting you your quote-unquote money back for the card you play to move your opponent's friend yeah um, I'm not quite gushing about this one but I am not denying its power it's it's pretty darn good Spike Master of Ceremonies another 4-4-4 four, four, four. but again if white is your primary color doable and I know white has at least one card that'll help you get extra action tokens probably more oh wow he lets you double up on song cards that that's really freaking good and you know I've already mentioned in at least one video I love song cards so yeah I'm gonna try to get my hands on lots of this guy he's he's ultra rare but dang Okay, that's all the spoilers we've gotten as of this recording. If you would like to know my thoughts on anything we get after this video, please follow me on Twitter. I pretty much retweet all spoilers with mini commentary, even if it's just saying something like, I think this flavor text is neat. I also occasionally post on the MLP CCG subreddit, or you're even welcome to ask me about the set in the comments for this very video. I also wouldn't mind at all getting direct messages on any of those three platforms. But for now, I really need to wrap this video up before it ends up being even longer. So, until next time, 
I am the Nate Dam Z, and I am going to go rock out to a certain movie soundtrack. Like a ditzy do. We want to stay, but can't find peace while sitting still. I guess we never will. We run the way. We won't hurry back again. The journey is the end. I love this very moment. We're speeding up, not slowing. We might know we can't win, but we're dumb enough to try. We're going there. Okay, some of you are probably wondering where the Tempest Shadow Troublemaker was. Well, because we didn't get it technically as an official spoiler, we only see it in this little preview image here. I didn't want to include it in the video proper, that just would have been kind of awkward. Plus, I really don't think you guys can read the text with as small as it is on the image. But I am going to try to give some thoughts on it real quick. Now, what she does is when she's uncovered, she lets you turn a main back over to its start side. Which, you know, for offensive purposes is pretty freaking good. You know, it can delay mod, it can make you do DJ over again, it can really set your opponent back. So in that, in those terms, I really, really like it. However, as people have pointed out, it doesn't say which main, it just says a main. So you could turn your own main back to the start side, which with, say, a certain pirate captain means you could just keep paying action tokens to give yourself points. You know, in theory, I mean, it's still going to take time to play the card and whatnot. So, taken on her own, she's perfectly fine, she's decent, she's usable. But, yeah, I do have to agree with the internet masses to an extent, at the very least, that combine this with how mains are so far working in this set there is potential for abuse. However, I'm not going to say she's a mistake or shouldn't have been printed or the game is ruined or anything like that because frankly we don't know what else the set has in store and I'm sure there are other countermeasures that you know I'm not thinking of at the moment. I mentioned in the video proper that Emperor Bugle made a Reddit post, not a Twitter post, explaining why. So again, if I remember and if I can find it, I will include a link to it in the description. Or chances are he will pop in and maybe explain it in a comment, because he's commented on every one of my videos just about. Which, you bugle if you're watching this far, thanks for that. It's really nice. I look forward to it every time. But yeah, that's it. Finally finishing this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I love you guys. Bye.